Steve Hofford, and I am the pastor here at Redeemer Lutheran Church. We are a small, energetic, diverse, and progressive church here in the west end of Toronto near Hyde Park. So I want to begin by acknowledging the land where we worship, work, and live. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. As a reconciled and reconciling people, we shall strive to be mindful of the history of all those who have and do call this land home, and we are aware of its sacredness. Here at Redeemer, we see ourselves as a place of sanctuary and solace in the midst of a busy city. And we also take very seriously our role in the care of creation, as well as caring for and seeking justice for those that are often placed on the margins. As you can see, we have a beautiful park-like property that is lovingly cared for by a few very dedicated volunteers. This is a space that we love to share with our neighbors, and you will often see people using the property for picnics, outdoor visits, dog walks, and even exercises like yoga. We also host the garden party. The garden party began over 14 years ago and is a community garden that provides over 650 pounds of organic herbs and vegetables to local food agencies every year. The non-denominational garden is carefully planted, tended, and harvested by volunteers from the neighborhood. So today we begin a new community education series that we are calling Food and Land Justice in a Time of Climate Crisis. This is a year-long series of different educational and social events that we are offering to provide education and, and discussion around these issues. We're planning lectures, movie nights, cooking and other demonstrations, as well as our very popular Spirit Songs concert for the community that's around us. This is International Compost Week. And so today we are kicking off the series by spreading beautiful, rich compost over our lawn and gardens. I'm gonna let Susan Antler tell you more about that in a moment, but before she does, I want to invite you to the next event in our series, which is happening this coming Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. We're going to have Dr. Sylvia Kiesbach, a professor from Trinity College at the University of Toronto. Dr. Kiesbach, who is also a permaculture farmer, writer, and activist, will, guided by your questions, explore how imperial control of land and food systems stretches back throughout history. She will then show how the ancient stories of the Jewish and Christian scriptures provide relevant strategies we can use today for resistance and regeneration. Then on June 21st, we will welcome Eric Johnston from the Native Canadian Centre of Toronto, who will share Indigenous teachings with us concerning the land. He will also explore how an inclusive past we, we uh, an inclusive past that we used to have was lost, and then he's going to offer ideas on how we might connect and partner for environmental justice now. And before I turn it over to Susan, I just want to thank those who have sponsored our series of events, the Compost Council of Canada, the Eastern Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, and Live Green Toronto. More details of all of the events in our series can be found on our website, RedeemerLutheran.ca. Over to Susan. Uh, she would uh, put her $2 down on the horses 
<laughs> she would always say, go for the gray horse. I said, mom, why do you want the gray horse? I don't, I, you gotta bet on the gray horse. And for, for those who care about the environment, for local economy, and for our respect of each other in terms of the food that we eat, bet on compost. That is the gray horse. What people don't expect is that with your respect to take that banana peel, take the fruit sticker off that banana peel before you do, and put it in that green bin or your backyard compost bin, you will save the precious space that is the landfill, 30 to 50 percent. You will mitigate climate change. This 25 yards represents the equivalent of 31,150 gas-powered kilometers being driven in terms of the greenhouse gas emissions just through the simple act of respecting where you place that, that organic waste. And then we talk about the soil. And we're really delighted that the breadth and depth of the Compost Council has not only folks that are focused on waste management, but also the return of valuable organic matter to the soil. And so, Glenn, my colleague, Glenn Monroe, could you talk a little bit about soil health? Because it's all about the critters of the soil. Thanks, Susan. I've got a handful of compost here. There are millions, literally millions of organisms in this. There's as many organisms in this handful of compost as there are people on the planet. Hmm. And they're all doing good things for us. We've, all, we've only begun to understand how important these organisms are. The ones that are in the compost, they're the same ones that are in the soil under my feet. Just, there's more of them, more constant. So that's why it's good to add compost. To add compost, you feed those critters, you add more of them so that you get better diversity, and all of that is healthy soil. So what is a healthy soil? A healthy soil means the organisms living in it have plenty, they've got lots of energy from the sun, from photosynthesis, from oxygen, good roots. They've got all this stuff that they need. What jobs do they do? Or what jobs do they do? They turn over the nutrients. They make them available to the plants. When you throw an apple core down and it ends up in the ground, it's working to turn that back to the plants. They also pick the nutrients right out of the mineral. They don't have little pieces of water. They, they uh, extract the minerals and feed them to the plants. They build the structure. When we're walking along a long way, we don't think of it. When we're walking from a community, it's a, it's a community of organisms that goes down several inches, sometimes deeper. And they have uh, all the kinds of things that we have in our community. They have resource extraction, they've got waste disposal, they've got communication routes, transportation routes, and all this sort of stuff. But it all depends on the soil having a good structure. And that means aggregates. It means little lumps of soil that stick together at different areas, so it leaves spaces in between for the water to get in, for the air to get in, so the air, all the organisms have to get in. That's the whole thing. When you add that compost, you're adding the things that the organism need to build a good structure in the soil. Not only that, but in the future, when you take your shovel and want to put it into the soil, you won't have to jump on it with both feet because then you'll be able to shove it right down and put one foot on it nice, healthy soil with good structure. It means when the rain comes, the rain will soak into the soil. It won't run off and take your fertilizer and whatever else you put on the soil with it. It goes right in and gets pulled in there like a sponge. You're turning the soil into a sponge. And it's pumped. This very simple material like this that makes that process happen much faster than you would know. So every time you're at it, not only do you get all the benefits Susan was talking about in terms of climate change, but you're also giving yourself your, your plants that you're growing, whether it's, it's just grass or whether it's perennials or whether it's annuals or vegetables, they all do better when the stru soil structure is good. And that's what compost is going to need to do. Uh, wait, 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 I just want to thank uh, Redeemer Lutheran Church, who is quite a remarkable church. Uh, in terms, I'm not sure if you're hearing all the noise, but this is about the only green space in downtown Toronto. This is the busiest street one of the busiest streets in Toronto, and yet they've devoted such significant land to the community. Mm -hmm.
so thank you, Pastor. And we also want to thank Miller Compost for the fantastic Compost Quality Alliance product that they generously donated. Region of PDL, James is over there, spreading the compost, just like all the advocates across the country and live in Toronto. So thanks very much. Happy Compost Week. Every day is compost. Thank you so much. This is the end of the compost portion of our event, but of course the compost not only benefits our lawn, it also benefits the garden party. And Louis Griss from the garden party just happened to show up. So I'm gonna ask him to take you all now for a tour of the garden. Good, good. And, and uh, when you when you take a little, uh, a little circle or something, do take a picture of that beautiful tree that we enjoy, and the beautiful flowers great, makes great shade for those that come here. Anyone that comes here, not just for the garden, but all the people in the community to come and enjoy this yard very often. And wonderful to see them. We encourage people to use the property. We are welcoming. We are encouraging. We like to educate and we donate the food, the produce to the food kitchens in our community. I'm not sure what all I'm expected to say about the garden. Do you need any volunteers? Uh, yes, we have some new ones already. Oh, I'm fine. yes, this is the message. Get out there. <laughs> uh, many of the ones that we've had in the past uh, are not returning, either for health, for distance, for COVID, for safety reasons. And yes, we realize we're going to need, we already have a few, but uh, yeah, this is a good plug. Uh, come and see us, talk to us on a Saturday, and uh, with that promise, we'll use you all at the same time, because we do have to follow, uh, you know, current rules, but we'll put you through the quick use, so we're going to So thank you again everyone for watching and a happy gardening season to you all, whether it's here at Redeemer or in your own gardens at home. Have a great day and happy composting. Here, here. Hallelujah. <laughs>